So in this movie, we continue where we left off with our last basic movie one, and we're going to go ahead and uh, animate Lenny, an imported character, one that ships with Anime Studio Pro, and show you how we use onion skins and some other little features to help regulate and more easily create some basic motion with this program. I'm going to go ahead and select the bone layer for Lenny over here in the lower right hand corner in the layers palette. As I'd mentioned in the last movie, in case you're skipping right to this one, the artist that put this together believes in creating skeletons a little different than I do, and it may work better for you, it may not. This large bone right here is actually the hip bone in my character setups, where I put it actually right where the hip is and control motion off of that. There's some pluses and minuses to doing it my way. One way is that uh, the bone is potentially underneath some other ones and other layers, and sometimes maybe be a little bit uh, hard to access. Well, when it's out to the side like this, you can access it a little more easily, but it also creates some different issues in terms of rotation of character. You know, it's one of those things you'll have to play with and see what works best for you. Well, with the bone layer selected right now, I'm going to go ahead and select my translation tool, keyboard shortcut T, and whoops, I'll show you something right here. I just about didn't do it. I'm going to drag this. Notice how the skeleton moves and the character doesn't. Whoops, I'm going to go ahead and undo that. In order to get the character and the skeleton to move together, we need to make sure that we are at least on frame one. So I've advanced this to frame one down here in the timeline. I can either do that by directly clicking on the timeline, or I can use the step ahead button that is in the transport controls right below the animation area. So with that in frame one, I'm going to go ahead and drag him back. And just for a sake of reference here, I'm going to put his feet at the bottom of the rendering frame. With that there, I'm going to say that, you know what, I want Lenny to take a complete full stride every six frames. That's going to be kind of a fast walk, but it'll be kind of smooth. So I'm going to advance the timeline simply by clicking on six. We go to that in the timeline. I'm going to, with my translate tool still selected for the bone, I am going to stop. Before we get going on that, let's go ahead and double check our onion skins. Relative frames is not turned on at the moment. I'll leave that off. And I'm going to click the onion skins right here at 6, 12, and 18. So for those three frames, we've got a very steady pace. Now, back with the translate tool right here, we're at frame 6. I'm going to go ahead and move Lenny ahead until, you know what, I forgot to do something here. Let me add another onion skin right at frame one. This will let me see that on frame six, when I move Lenny forward, we're going to see an outline of where he was. This is the beauty of working with onion skins and especially useful when you're doing something like foot placement. There's two ways to handle characters walking in animation. One is to create a walk cycle where the legs simply move but the character doesn't go anywhere. Very common tactic. And then what you do is you move the background behind them. But in some instances, you may want them to walk across your stage, and that's what I'm doing right here. So at frame six, I've gone ahead and moved him till the heel is touching just about at the toe. I'll advance the timeline to frame 12. We'll go ahead and repeat about that same distance, and you can eye this. There's nothing specifically mathematical to that. And then at frame 18, I'll go ahead and duplicate that action. Now we see that we've got four outlines of Lenny here, one at one, six, 12, and 18. So now if I go ahead and slide the timeline back and forth, we can see that, well, there's all those instances of Lenny. Now typically, you will want to set up base motion like this and then add limb motion. So one of the reasons I've done that is that we get basic progression across the stage, and then all we do is synchronize the legs to that motion. At frame six, I'll advance back to the timeline there, and I'm going to hide the onion skins now that occur after this frame. Since this is a step forward, one foot has to stay on the ground in place while the other one advances. So I'm going to grab the, the mid leg bone here. Whoops, I'm still in translate mode. Let me go to manipulate bone tool, which is keyboard shortcut Z. Let me go ahead and pull that over here. I'm going to have his toe just about where the toe is. So it's not precise movement. There'll be a little slippage in there, but that's okay. Now I know that the leg is right here at frame six, and we're going to have to adjust that a little bit later on. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and leave that there. So the next step is that as he moves forward, this leg remains in place, and this leg has to swing all the way forward and get ready to move. So I'm going to go ahead and activate 
where it is, or the onion skin for frame 12. Actually, I'm going to move the timeline up to 12. We know that this leg here, the one that's straight down, has to stay all the way back here like it was on frame 6. I'm going to go ahead and pull this back. Now you'll notice that the onion skin outline is moving, and that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and advance to frame 18. And we can see now that what happens is that the leg that's forward needs to drop down, stay in place. And then we swing this back leg just like we did the first time through. So just keeping an eye, and this is a little cheater reference that I do. I'm just looking at what's right below the heel, actually, and it happens to be the R and layer. There's a couple other ways you can play this little trick, but this is just a real fast one. So that as we move forward, I'm going to go ahead and take this character's leg and bend it back so that the heel's about there. Flatten the foot out just a little bit. Tune that up. I'll grab, whoops, not his arm, but the leg back here and swing that forward. So now as we look at our onion skins, we can see that we're starting to get a progression across the stage. His leg, especially the back leg as it moves, we're not getting any bending motion in that. So the next thing to do is divide. We're moving at 6, 12, and frame 18. Somewhere in between, I want to go ahead and grab this left leg, or I should say the one that's on my left as I look at it, raise it and bend it. Then I'll come to between 6 and 12, and I'll do the same thing with the right leg here. I'm going to go ahead and raise it and bend it. And then finally, one more time, between 12 and 18. Go ahead and raise the back leg and bend that. So now we get a real easy progression using onion skins of our character walking as he moves across the stage.